Hey, what's up? Where's my camera? Hey, what's up, True Experience Nation? It's your boy, Richard McCain. If you're new around here, welcome. My wife is Amanda, and we together, we have a mission, man. And that mission is to help you learn how to experience your best life as we are learning to experience ours. Okay? If that's, a, if that's something you can get down with, if that's something you vibe with, then uh, do yourself a favor. Do me a favor. Drop a, Go ahead and like this video. I right, like the page more importantly and um, and come back because we go live every single day. We have been going through the book Atomic Habits. It's about building a foundation. It's about te teaching you how to build your own blueprint for success on the things that you want to do. And we want to cover um, how to find and fix bad habits. The cause is more importantly, right? Like we want to find, we want to fix the cause of mother freaking bad habits. We got to get some stuff out. Got to clean up. What's up, Mash? How you doing, girl? We gotta we gotta clean some stuff up. And you know what? What's a craving? What what is that? A craving is just really letting you know something is missing. Something is missing. Therefore, you have a craving, right? When you have a ha a habit or a behavior, that's the response to a craving. And a craving is indicating something to you that Houston, we have a problem. There is something that is missing, okay? And a desire is the difference between where you're currently at and where you want to be in the future. If you cold right now, you have a desire to be warm, okay? Where I'm at right now is not good. Something's missing, okay? I need to be warm. I need something. Let me get a blanket. Let me get a hoodie. Let me get something. Prompts you to take action. Sometimes those actions to solve those solutions are not good. They are bad. Here's what's funny about this. So there is a, a, a surface level to every habit. All right. So every habit has like a, like a surface level craving. And then it also has like a deep meaning uh, motives. And I found this very interesting. So let's say for instance, you want a taco. It's Tuesday. It was taco Tuesday. I want to eat a taco. And you ask somebody, why they want a taco? They might say because it's good or they like it or whatever, but the real deep meaning, right? That's the surface level. The habit is the taco. The deep motive, motive behind it is they need food. And so our current habits, like our habits are like modern day solutions to ancient desires. Just a natural basic human instinct that we have, we have these needs, these desires, and our, and our habits that we have today are this is the modern way to deal with them. So I want to list, okay, let me get back over this page because I do want to list some of them because this is kind of eye opening. And once you realize that and, and, and figure it out, you can, you can do something about it. So check it out. Here are some, just a few of the, the basic human needs, motives that we have. Conserve energy, all right? We look for ways to conserve energy. When you out on the prairie boy back in the day, you was hunting in the safari or wherever you need to conserve energy because you need to get through get through the whole day obtain water food you need to find love reproduce connect bond with others win social acceptance and approval reduce uncertainty and achieve status and prestige we've talked about some of these before um, within this this series if you're just tuning in you can go and watch the series. You go to our playlist. I have everything about Atomic Habits. I think this is lesson uh, nine, nine or ten that we're currently on. And so those are interesting. So each one of those have different habits um, associated with them. Here's what's cool. There's more than one habit or behavior that can solve those ancient desires. Your current habit that you have to solve that desire may not be the best habit to solve that desire. Y'all feel what I'm saying? It could be bad, it could be a bad habit. But because it relieves it, because your brain's associated with, hey, this solves one of my basic needs, I'm going to keep doing it. It's hard to break that. Well, once you realize there's more than one way and there might be a better way, you can start to change your relationship with the bad habit and the good habit. Here's an example. People want to smoke because they want relief. They want anxiety, relief from anxiety. 
That solves my anxiety. Let me get a let me hit let me hit one up real quick. Well, some people can release um, anxiety by going for a run or going for a walk, or hitting the gym. Still, both people have the same basic ancient desire, but they have two different habits associated with solving it, one good and one bad. So now that we know that, what can we do? Well, first of all, just like the, the second law of behavior change, which is what we're talking about, the cravings, we want to make things attractive, make your bad habits unattractive. One way to do that is to start highlighting the benefits of not doing that bad behavior. See, we have an association right now. We need to change the way we feel. We need to change our relationship we have with that bad habit that we currently have. Now that we know the, the cause, I have a deep feeling of, um, there's a deep motive behind the reason why I'm doing this behavior. Now that you realize there's more than one way to do it, let's start making the bad habit very unattractive. Highlight the benefits of not doing it. Stop lying to yourself and saying that smoking solves your, your anxiety when it's like, okay, realistically, smoking does nothing for your nerves. In fact, it damages your nerves. We're repeating those things and thinking about those things out loud and um, associating a, a negative feeling with that will start to change the way you view that bad habit and you fill it in with something else. All right, that's, that's one way to take care of it. Now let's talk about reprogramming your brain to do hard habits. That, guess what? It's gonna, be, it's gonna be a brain buster for you guys right now. We wanna make the hard habit more attractive. One way to do that <laughs> is to start associating positive experiences with that hard habit. Make it, make it more attractive by assigning positive experiences. Bad habit, we wanna assign negative experiences. Good habit, we want to assign positive um, experiences with it to make it more attractive so that we want to do it more. One way is a, is a quick mindset, uh, mindset shift. And I like this because this kind of dabbles into gratitude. They don't say that here, but I'm big on gratitude. And it says, instead of associating one of these hard habits, like it's a burden, like I have to, like, I have to go walk and I have to go running in the morning. I have to do push-ups. Rephrase it just a little bit and say, I get to. I forgot, I get to go walk. I get to go run. I get to go do push-ups. You ever been sick? Like bedridden sick? Man, the only thing you want to do is get better. Like you're just like, yo, I just want to get out the house. I just want to go get some fresh air. I just, I wish I could walk my legs. I'm not sure if they're working anymore. I can't move. See, when you start, when you do that little shift, you start looking at it and you change the relationship you have with that, with that habit. Man, I get to go, I get to go run. I get to, you know, and, and, and here's a, a benefit of that. Instead of looking at it like a burden, like, it's going to make me sweaty. My legs might be sore afterwards. You're dreading it. So instead of, it's like, yo, man, I get to, bro, I get to go run. Let me go out here. Let me build up my endurance. Let me build up my strength. Let me build up my stamina. You start associating some of these good experiences with it. Man, I'm gonna be pumped up. I'm gonna be energetic when I get done doing this. I'm gonna be clear headed. Like I, I get to go out there and focus when I run. When you start associating some of these good experiences with it, it makes it more attractive. It makes you want to do it more, okay? There's something else coming here. It's called a motivation ritual. And what that is, and this is taking it up to the next level associate something that you associate a behavior, right? One of these hard behaviors or hard habits you're wanting to do with something that you enjoy. Like it's kind of, it's kind of like linking the two It's a little bit different from the temptation bundling we talked about um, previously, but this is more like a little ritual than you, so that the cue of this stimulates that response. Here's an example that they gave in the book. Sorry, my nose itches. If you want to feel happy, think about something that makes you happy. And here they say like petting your dog. Like, hey, you know what? When you pet your dog, you know, you start to feel happy. Well, here's the way you put a ritual onto it. He said, so associate something like taking deep breath, like take three deep breaths and then pet your dog. Take 
three deep breaths, and then pet your dog every time you do that. Well, what happens is you start to associate taking three deep breaths with feeling happy. Oh, every time I take three deep breaths, that's the cue that leads to the craving of feeling, of feeling happy because you've associated with petting that dog. So guess what? Anytime you do that, let's let's play this out and say, oh, every time I take deep breaths, I um, automatically I start to feel happy because I associate that with that um, that action I was doing that I like. Okay. So know anytime you're you know stressed out or you got something going on or you feel da- down a little bit, take three deep breaths and you'll feel happy. That y'all get that? Like that's kind of huge. I had to read it a couple times to fully understand it, but it makes perfect sense and it's actually something that I do. So one of my things is um, I like to get my focus back. Like we all talk about getting in a rut and it's the key is sometimes when you get in the rut, it's hard to get out. You get in this vicious cycle of, you know, the same, the drug, the drugs, like the drug and drug, like you just down and down on your luck feeling bad. And it's hard for you to get out. Well, I now have a process that I know exactly how to get out of that because I have a ritual. Mine is listening to podcasts and like going on like this walk, like this super long. I just walk, I think, I visualize, I listen to podcasts, you know, I I brainstorm, I do all this stuff. And it just, I know immediately if I go on a long vacation and I come back to get really back into the swing of things. I'll do that and it just like it purges everything. I know once that happens, I'm right back on track instantly, immediately. Supercharged, energetic, focused, clear headed. I've just conditioned myself to, to think that way. And so that's a ritual that I have that whenever I'm unmotivated, whenever I need to get in gear, whenever I need to start making progress or moving forward, that's something I can do that will put me right back on track. And so I didn't really know that and understand that. I just knew that it happened. And after reading this, it put it into perspective on why that is. And so, I don't know, I thought that was um, a really cool deal. I hope y'all got benefit out of this, man. Like, look, we got things that's wrong. You can fix it. It seems oversimplified, but that's good. This is about making small little changes, not making super huge drastic changes. And so I hope at least with this video, you, you can start to grasp the idea of like, you know what? Hey, I have a deep motivated desire or or motives here and my habits are just the solution to those. I get to choose what those behaviors and habits are. There's good ones, there's bad ones, there's indifferent ones. If you have something that's bad that you want to change, you can change that. You can change who you are with those behaviors and start implementing some other things as good. And that's a powerful thing to be at. So you don't have to just be at the whim of, your circumstances or not understand and just think that it is the way it is, you can change the way it is. And so that's pretty cool. Anyway, guys, if you enjoy this kind of stuff, you already know what the business is. Go ahead and uh, like the page, follow me, hit the little bell whenever I go live and I'll be going live again tomorrow sometime because we're moving on to the third law of behavior change and that is make it easy. Walk slowly, but never backwards. I like it. I'm ready to talk about it right now. Anyway, guys, Hope y'all have a wonderful night. Until tomorrow, I'm out.